Welcome to Crypto Tutors. We are humanizing cryptocurrency and blockchain and are bringing the best trailblazers and success stories like Isaiah Jackson, Tanya Evans, Ian Bellina, Cleve Mesador, and Tinashe Nitaganga on the crypto couch. Click subscribe and the bell to be the first to watch the latest interviews every single week. As you can see here, we are like no longer since the beginning of this year, or even last year, we're like really no longer going toward that upward right. So I have just a little trend line right here, you know, from November 20th, like we've been on this upward momentum. We've had a great increase in the market all the way up here to the top where we were at around 64,000. We dropped a bit to lower 60s, mid 50s. But as you can see, this overall trend line right here, where it's just riding along this line was broken. And it was broken right here during May, right? You know, when everything was going on with the Elon Musk, uh, you know, crash and the China negative news coming out. So we know that things have changed when our long-term trend line is just broken. Um, so, but with that being said, you know, we, we want to understand, okay, where is it we're at in this cycle? So I would say where we're at right now is more of an, an accumulation phase because when we've already crashed and things are moving sideways a lot, that's it, you know, we're not going any higher, we're not going any lower. We're just kind of treading along um, the support and resistance, which is what I'm about to get into now. So, so, so let's dig into that a little bit, right? What are some of the indicators you think would be beneficial given that we're sort of, you know, trending along a, a pretty consistent line of uh, resistance and right. support? It's looking like resistance is, what would you say, 39,000 or so? So yes, I would say resistance at is around right now, around 42,000. So I'm gonna find us, I'm gonna, we're gonna do us, I'm gonna do the support. So how do we find support? Well, you know, currently we just want to look back maybe the past couple months or two, three months, maybe four, to see, get a general idea. Okay, like where haven't prices really breached yet? Where haven't they gone under? So I like to have a little box. As I can see here from this candlestick on May 12th, the, one of the lowest uh, peaks or points that it hit was around 29, 29,000, upper 29,000. So I'm going to start there. Okay. And I'm just going to go all the way to the right and just, just extend it all the way out into the right. So what we're looking for is multiple candles where the price has gone low and it hasn't really breached below those, these levels. So right here, as we could see from May 19th, we hit around up the upper 29s only to come back up and then to come back down here to around a lower 28.5, only to come back up and range and hit once again, lower 30s, upper 29s. Okay, so, so that's we, support. That's what we that's, would call Yeah, and I'm gonna color code it because I, you know, we wanna, you know, put it in green, like the support is green here. So, so we could see, so, you know, coming in uh, prior to, or after, um, May 18th, we already know that we've crashed because we've had a significant drop all the way from uh, roughly 65, 64,000 to, you know, the lower upper 29,000. So we've, we've lost about 53% of the market. So where do we go from here? So now we've identified our support. Like I said, we're looking for the lowest lows that were, that were hit. Where, where can this not breach? Like, where is it struggling to go under? And so, and resistance is the opposite. So now that we know that our support is roughly, in, you know, we want to have three uh, at least candlesticks to confirm a trend. The more, the better, but at least three. But, you know, like I said, the more, the better. So we have one, two, three, four, five, roughly five. And I could see from the support, we, you know, we're, we're the low supports is around 28,000. And you know, upwards of thirty thousand. This is where the prices have kind of failed to have a major move to the downside so far. So now we're gonna look for okay, where is our resistance at? 
So I'm gonna do the pretty much the opposite of finding my support. Where have prices for the past three or four months failed to go above? Or has had trouble or struggling to go above? So we're gonna take our last um, you know, cycle crash or we're gonna start from the crash. And we see that if we just come up, we crashed here or we, yeah, we, we dropped right here. And if we just come up to this candlestick, we bounce right back up to around $42,000. So we're gonna just start from there right afterwards. And you could, you know, from a long term, you can kind of see where the prices are, you know, getting supported and they're having resistance at. So as I see here, I can already see like right around here at the 41,000 level, it's been rejected and we haven't gone past that only to go a couple weeks out or a month out, only to get back to these levels again, a little bit higher. We're gonna go ahead and draw that. There we go. We'll, we'll stretch it out to like end of September. Um, now as a trader, you know, and if you, you can approach this many different ways, but if you're short-term, cause I don't really short-term trade, but if you are a short-term trader, Understanding where your support and resistance is is very crucial because if I'm just entering, I want to know, okay, when's the best time to get in? Well, if I'm looking at this channel and I see that we've roughly been ranging from 30,000 to 40,000 for the past three months, you know, I would consider getting in at the lower end of the channel, like, you know, maybe somewhere like at the lows right here. So setting and a limit order around like the 29,000. 20, uh, over 30,000, yes, but I keep in mind is this is only part of it because at those levels, it's more riskier okay. um, because there's, there's so much uncertainty. But, you know, if, if you're, if you're short-term trading, you want to see, okay, where's my support and resistance? And if I'm in a channel like this, like I would consider getting in at the lower end of the channels. And then when we get up to here, surprise, surprise, we have resistance, I would consider maybe exiting and selling if we're a short-term trading is our strategy. Understanding the support and resistance could, could really help um, you with short-term trading or even understanding when's the best time to enter in the market. And to pretty much put it, I'm gonna enlarge this, let's refresh it. And this has worked for me for years and it works good on the daily. To pretty much put it is I look to, uh, to buy when the market shows signs of weakness and look to sell or sell off a little of my profits when the market shows signs of strength. So I know that, and typically with this channel, you know, right here, we're measuring the strength of the buying and the selling. So when we get below, when we get to around the 30 level, like right here, we get to around these levels, we consider that the market is being oversold. So there's a lot of people selling especially when it gets down to here, there's that selling is a lot more than usual. And then, so we look at, you know, we look at it down here. So now we know that the market roughly at these levels is very oversold. There's some fear, people are getting out of their positions. So then let's look at up here. And we know when we come at around the 70 on the RSI and, you know, or above, that means the market is overbought. So a lot of people, a lot of buying, a lot of buying is happening at a very fast rate. Cause you know, within the 50, this is kind of the mean, you know, this is in the middle. So if it's around here, there's not too, too much buying, too, too much selling. It's like more of like kind of out of stasis, but we know at the extremes that when we get down here, the market's being oversold. And when we get up here, the market is being overbought. So when I say we, we want to look for signs when the market is weak to get in and, and sell when there's strength in the market. What I'm, how we can interpret this on the RSI is maybe we can, I'm not saying this, but let's consider buying when the market is oversold and weak and let's consider selling when we're up here and the market is overbought and showing signs of strength. Wow, Justin, thank you so much for just imparting so much wisdom, so much genius and brilliance with the uh, crypto couch community. Um, continue to keep doing what you're doing. We want to follow your journey. We want to follow your story. We're definitely going to have you come back to talk more about technical analysis, but you gave us a lot to chew on. And I'm sure in the comments, folks are going to have a lot to say, but we thank you and we wish you well. And we're uh, excited to host you back here on the couch very soon. Oh, I'm excited to be on and thank you for having me and look forward to seeing you in the future.
Thank you Making so much. Making money while we sleep. All the time. <laughs> <laughs> Want to learn more? Visit CryptoTutors.com. This episode is sponsored by Cash App.